The Paleolithic diet's origins date back to our cavemen ancestors millions of years ago. They ate mostly meat and berries, and the diet of such has not changed for this more modern version of the Paleolithic diet. For millions of years, our ancestors ate nothing more than meat, birds, fish, and the roots, fruits, and leaves of many plants. Grains, potatoes, and beans weren't safe to eat because, in their raw state, they contained deadly toxins. About 10,000 years ago, people discovered that cooking grains and such made them safe to eat and even quite tasty. These new foods are referred to by Paleolithic diet buffs as Neolithic foods. As far as the Paleolithic diet is concerned, Neolithic foods are bad. So that means that while on the Paleolithic diet, you're not to eat grains such as bread or pasta, beans, including string beans and kidney beans, peas, snow peas, lentils, peanuts, or potatoes. Also, while on the Paleolithic diet, all dairy products are off limits, as well as sugar and salt. The foods you can eat are eggs, fruits, vegetables, root vegetables, though not potatoes or sweet potatoes, berries, organ meats, nuts, not peanuts or cashews, and meat of all sorts, such as beef, pork, fish, or birds. Of course, it's not a good idea to start out eating like this all at once, because your body is not used to it. It's recommended that you start out merely eating a Paleolithic breakfast, and eventually work your way up. The highest level of anti-nutrients in our diet comes from grains, beans, and potatoes, so the positive side of cutting these out is that body will have less anti-nutrients to deal with. An anti-nutrient is merely a toxin, but is called an anti-nutrient by the scientific community because toxin sounds too alarmist. We can use an apple as an example. When an animal eats an apple, the seeds pass through him and end up creating a new apple tree. If the seeds were chewed up, there'd be no new tree. To prevent this, apple seeds contain toxins, which cause many different defensive mechanisms for the seeds. First off, they make the seeds taste bad, and no one wants to eat something that tastes bad. Second, some of the toxins are enzyme blockers, and they bind up the animal's digestive system. Last, the seeds contain lectins, which are toxic proteins. There is also a particularly dangerous group of lectins, called Hannibal lectins. These toxic proteins cause great damage to our cells such as stripping them of their protective mucus tissue, bonding to blood cells to cause clotting, and even causing apoptosis, or cell death. Beans, grains, and potatoes also contain enzyme blockers and lectins. Potatoes are especially unhealthy because they contain another family of toxins called glycol alkaloids. These toxins aren't destroyed by cooking and can be very dangerous. So, if eating grain is so unhealthy, how come all the birds haven't croaked yet? Well, the answer is simple. Over the course of evolution, grain-eating birds have developed special digestive enzymes. Many of you are probably bored by now with all this talk of enzymes and toxins, right? So let's move on to the good stuff, food. Here's some tips on what to eat while on the Paleolithic diet. It's hard to completely cut dairy and grains out of your breakfast, but it can be done. You can still eat eggs, bacon, or even a Paleo breakfast shake. Just mix a bunch of frozen berries together with some water or orange juice in a blender and drink away. For lunch, any meat you can get in your hands on is great, but be sure to balance it out with a salad or some veggies. The same is true for supper. Remember to always eat vegetables with your meat, because eating only meat is likely to get you killed in the long run. And what about those of us who love to snack? Can't eat chips or chocolate anymore, so what are we to do? Well, there's still many things you can munch on, such as beef jerky, carrots, nuts, or even pork rinds. So just how is eating all this supposed to help you lose weight? Well, the trick is that once you've eaten a paleo meal, you'll feel fuller, but on less calories. You have to keep the snacking to a minimum too, unfortunately. When first starting on the paleo diet, you can expect a steady pace of weight loss, faster initially, and then gradually slowing. When you stop relying on carbohydrates for your energy, your body will burn your excess fat for energy. Eating more protein will also prevent loss of lean body mass. Exercise is also not necessary while on this diet. Of course, exercise in moderate amounts is healthy, but not needed to lose weight while on the paleolithic diet. You don't have to count carbs as you do on many other diets, so long as you eat what our ancestors did. But back to food. If you visit paleofood.com, you can find many different and delicious recipes designed specifically for people on the Paleolithic diet. Some great recipes include the light vegetable soup, fresh spinach salad, lemon chicken kebabs, and blueberry walnut pancakes. There are some odd recipes on the menu as well, such as yellow jacket soup. Now don't worry, you don't eat the yellow jackets, you eat the grubs. For millions of years, people have been eating a Paleolithic diet, and we're still here, so something about it must be working, right?